Paul, thank you for leading us in congregational singing. And uh, Happy New Year, Redeemer Fellowship. Uh, we're finally here. The old year is behind us, and the 2021 is still brand new, fresh, and new. I want to thank uh, Fran Mulder for uh, coming up and helping refresh the stage here for the new year. It looks great. Uh, thank you for coming in and doing that. And uh, for those of you who are watching online, later on in the service, we'll be having communion. If you want to uh, have something prepared, uh, you can take it with us uh, together, communion. On Wednesday, I got a call from Gary and Elizabeth that uh, Elizabeth had some symptoms. Uh, she's awaiting the test for her COVID test, and that Gary deemed it just on, to err on the side of caution and uh, thought it wise not to put anyone at possible risk and he asked me to help out this morning. Elizabeth is feeling fine. I uh, was texting her this morning, and Lord willing, uh, planning on doing her Zoom meeting, I was fully planning on doing her Zoom meeting uh, tomorrow. And so ladies, uh, log in and, uh, and Zoom, Zoom away. Um, one of the benefits of, of the stay-at-home orders uh, that we've had in 2020 is there haven't been any of door-to-door -door salesmen. Have you noticed that? Uh, no ding-dongs, no... Uh, but this morning, or yesterday, I went to my mail, I got a letter, and it's a handwritten envelope. And inside it is addressed to myself, and the Jehovah's Witnesses aren't going door-to-door, -door, they're going mailbox to mailbox, which is interesting. Got to give them uh, kudos for creativity, but uh, we will... You got to watch out for who knocks on your door. Everybody who knocks isn't always welcome. One of the, uh, between COVID-19, forest fires, murder hornets, protests, Zoom meetings, mass elections this year has been one for the books. Was 2020 a lost year? Many think so. Uh, the Atlantic Story by Joe Pinkerson said decades from now, scholars will have a wealth of materials for their accounts of this pivotal time. But when the people who lived it look back at the timelines of their personal lives, many of them will find gaps where 2020 should have been. For all its eventfulness, 2020 has been a lost year in several senses of the word. On top of the enormous loss of human life, the pandemic paused many people's progress their long-plotted family and career goals. It forced countless of celebrations and holiday gatherings, either to on Zoom or out of existence. Education uh, plans to meet in person, uh, career goals, uh, business plans, all lost to 2020. As a Christian, while there, be, while there may be many things to lament, I would encourage you to think as Job, as, as our heart um, will choose to say, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This morning, we're going to look at hope in the new year. So turn with me to Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may be abounding in hope. Now in context, the, uh, Paul is telling the, uh, the Christians there that he's writing to that uh, Christ has become a servant on behalf of the Jews, on behalf of God's truth, to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs that the Gentiles may glorify God, that we uh, who are Gentiles may enter in to the joy of the Lord. And we are grateful for that truth. God is a God of hope. One of the workings of the Holy Spirit is that you abound in hope. Sometimes I find it helpful to look up the acronyms of, of a word to find it kind of feel how people use use the word. So hope typed in googled it up and uh, First thing I came up with hackers on planet earth. Well, that's interesting 
Hispanic Organizations for Progress in Education. Well, that's, that's good. Having only positive expectations, H-O-P-E. Oh, that's positive. Helping others prosper eternally. Well, now we're getting closer. Uh, but the one that showed up more than any other was hang on, pain ends. H-O-P-E. Hang on, pain ends. Whether it's the pain of isolation, the pain of loss, the pain of losing our jobs, of, of not being able to meet together, to gather and worship, the pain of dashed hopes or longings unfulfilled, physical pain or pain of the heart, hang on, pain ends. Maybe not in this life, but for certain in the next. As Paul said, for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Hope is commonly used to mean a wish, where the strength of the hope is in the strength of the person's desire. But in the Bible, a biblical definition, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. Its strength is in his faithfulness and in his written word. It's based on the very character of God himself. There's a difference between hope based on desires and hope based on reasons. I, I hope to win the lottery. I hope my team wins the Super Bowl. I hope. Hope is trust and confidence and belief. We had this hope because of God's track record in the past and his promises for the future. Without this confidence, we're left in a state of low-grade conviction, bordering on skepticism, or even worse, left in total hopelessness, distrust, doubt, and despair. Uh, one of the dangers of, of hoping in the promises of God is when we take scriptures out of context and apply promises that were never made to us. Uh, you, Gary has said it before, wonderful things in the Bible I see, things that were put there by you and by me. Another, put Paul, uh, another pitfall is false hope. Everywhere you turn, you hear news about the hope of the vaccine, a political party, hope in this upcoming media star or educational program. Psalm 146 makes it clear Put not your trust in princes, in sons of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the grave. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he who help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. If there's one thing we've learned in 2020, it's that men have feet of clay. Whether it's a Christian leader, a political leader, a media superstar, it's often too, uh, often where the, the web and the tabloids are riddled with lurid stories of their indiscretions. My encouragement, keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the only one who ultimately will not disappoint. As the psalmist says, I have hope in 2021 because God is creator. He's the author and the finisher of all things. He made the moon and the stars and the seas. The heavens declare the glories of God. The sky proclaim his handiwork. I, I have to thank uh, I'm in forever gratitude to Martin Carey for introducing me to the night sky, and, and he has for so many of us. Orion's belt, the Pleiades, the Geminides, the, the moon phases of the sun. We get to ch a chance to look at some of these through his telescopes. Uh, we're so privileged to live near Joshua Tree, uh, one of the few dark sky areas here in Southern California. And I just marvel at the beauty of the creation as I look up and photograph the stars. And it's a joy to bring others and watch them get excited as 
they see the Milky Way for the first time. Um, as scientists look into their telescope, we learn of the vastness of space and all that it contains, and we marvel at the bigness of our God. As we look closer here on Earth and into the microscopes and see the detail, we see undeniable evidence of design and variety and creativity in creation. See, the same God who made all of these things made you and he made me. I have hope in 2021 for who God is. Earlier this year, before the everything shut down, during word search, we were doing a study on the attributes of God. Those qualities that make God God. Those qualities, some that he shares with us and some that are his alone. I'm going to quickly review just three here. Omnipotence. God is all-powerful. Uh, he is regarded as the supreme power. This means God can do whatever he wants. He is not subject to physical limitations like man is. He doesn't get tired. He can do what he wants according to his good will and purposes. Being omnipotent, God has the power over the wind and the water and the waves. Gravity, physics, God's power is infinite. Omniscience means God knows all things. God is all-knowing in the sense that he's aware of the past, the present, of the future. Nothing takes him by surprise. His knowledge is total. It is complete. It is perfect. He knows all that there is to know and all that can be known. Omnipresence. God is capable of being everywhere at the same time. The psalmist says, where can I go where you aren't there? Up into the heavens, you're there. Down to the she-hole, you're there. Everywhere we go. His divine presence encompasses the whole of the universe. There's no location that he does not have it, inhabit. This is uh, pantheism, which, success, which uh, uh, assumes that God is in the universe. It, uh, it's the same as the universe. It's, instead, omnipresence indicates that God is distinct from the universe, but inhabits the entirety of it. He's everywhere at once. As we've been studying the life of Moses, when Moses asked the Lord, show me your glory, God reveals himself by saying, the Lord, the Lord, the God of mercy, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression of sin, but who will no means clear the guilty, visiting iniquity to the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. This same God, who's all-knowing, all-powerful, who's everywhere, knows me intimately. He knows the number of our days. He knows the number of hairs on our head. Good thing God knows subtraction. He knows my name. He knows my heart. He knows my heartaches. He knows my longings. He knows my fears. This truth gives me incredible hope when I'm wanting something and I don't get it. Proverbs 2.21 says, The king's heart is like a stream of water, and the hand of the Lord turns it wherever he will. The God of the universe, all-knowing, all-powerful, can open doors whenever he wants. So when you get a no, it's not rejection. It's direction. Be thankful to the Lord for the no's that you get. A few years ago, our family was facing a difficult circumstance, and Elizabeth would in, uh, encourage me with the, uh, the statement. She would text it to me. She would tell me, you know, the Lord knows. And you know what? <laughs> he does. And he doesn't know at a distance. He knows up close and personal. The Lord knows and he cares. Have hope that the Lord knows. Whatever circumstance you find yourself you have hope in 2021 because who God is. I have hope in 2021 because what God has done. First, God sent his son, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
We just finished celebrating Christmas. The babe in the manger, the word that became flesh that dwelt among us. Luke 2, there were shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord showed round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good, no good news that will cause great joy for the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. God sent his Son. Hope is born. I have hope in 2021 because of the cross. Jesus was betrayed by one of his disciples, stood trial for crimes that he didn't commit. He was beaten and flogged. He had a crown of thorns hammered to his brow. With criminals on each side, he was nailed to a tree. As he hung there dying, he cried, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? It is finished. The crucifixion, it's the day that hope died. As horrific as the cross was, it had to happen. A sacrifice had to be made. Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. 1 Peter, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we may die to sin and to live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. 2 Corinthians 5, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I have hope in the resurrection. Luke 24, 1, in the first day of the week, early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wandering about, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In their fright, the women bowed down their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Because of the empty tomb, everything changes. Hope is alive. As the song says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. I can live with hope. Now it's great to know the biblical story of the birth, the death, the resurrection, um, all the things that Christ has done on our behalf, but it takes more than knowing to enter into the kingdom. We have to believe. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If all we do is we live our lives, we get what we deserve. We get the wages. We work, we get the wages. Those are what we deserve. A gift, you can't force a gift on somebody. Take this gift, here. Then it's not a gift. It turns into something else. When we accept the gift, a gift has to be accepted. When we accept the free gift of salvation, we experience the great exchange. We give Christ our sins, our filthy rags, everything that we've ever done, we give it to him. And he gives us his robe of righteousness. It's justification, just as if we've never sinned. It's more than that. It's not like we start at zero. We get all of Christ's righteousness given to in, uh, in our bank account on our, be on, uh, on our behalf. John 1, 12, but to all who did receive him and believed on his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. If you've never made the decision to follow the Lord, I implore you, do it today. Repent from your sin and follow Jesus. I have hope in 2021 because not only what God has done, but because what God is doing. One of the primary tools that God uses is the word of God itself. Hebrews 4, for the word of God is alive and active, 
sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. We are being sanctified. Sanctification, being transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Philippians 1.6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. We are not left alone to live this life by ourselves, but we've been given the helper, the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is being developed inside of us. Galatians 5, for the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. And when you live with these qualities and increase in amount, you will live with hope. I have hope in 2021 because I hope in his return. Who knows? This may be the year of the Lord's return. Titus 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Galatians 5, for the Lord himself will descend with heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive, who are left, we will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Jesus' return is the hope of heaven. Peter 3.10, the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly body and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. We'll get a new heaven and a new earth. The king is coming, not as a babe in a manger but as a lamb who bears the marks of slaughter in power and in might. But when is this return? (laughs) Jesus himself said in Matthew, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. So let me tell you, if anybody tells you they know when the Lord is returning, it's a sure sign they don't. And you should mark that group with a red flag because you know they have a different agenda than what is clearly taught in scriptures. Well, we don't know when the Lord is returned. We do know that he's coming and that he's coming himself. For Jesus himself said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you there myself. For where I am, you may be also. There was a song from my youth written by Charlie Peacock, taken from Second Peter. Dear friends, he's not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness to be. Keep a watch out. Don't lose faith. He's going to come for you. He said he's going to come for you. He's going to come for you. You wait and see. In the end, it will all be made right. But we look around and we see so much pain and suffering in this world. Friend, let me tell you, that's because it's not the end. Revelations 21, he will wipe away every tear from their eye and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. As I was uh, thinking uh, through other reasons I have hope in 2021, I have hope in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the bride of Jesus himself. Jesus told Peter, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ephesians says, Christ loved his church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the word to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy without blemish. As part of the church, we are also being renewed without spot or blemish. 
I have hope in 2021 for faithful teachers, men who study rightly and divide the word of truth. Those uh, teachers who have no interest in tickling the ears of their hearers, whose goal is to gather large crowds to entertain an audience and to stroke their egos, but those in who humility shepherd their flock well, encourage their congregation to uh, feed the, and, and feed them the pure milk of the word and to feast on the meat of the word. These are men that can honestly say, as in 1 Corinthians, follow my example and I follow in the example of Christ. We're privileged here at Redeemer Fellowship to have such good Bible teaching. Gary on Sunday morning, Elizabeth with the women, Martin with the Sunday, uh, with the Sunday morning class, Richard and Colleen with their FAF group, the Quinleys with the teens, Nikki and Fran with their children. As a congregation, we are truly blessed. I have hope in 2021 because of good songs. Both tried, uh, those both tried and true and those that are new. Good songs are like maple syrup. They're good, <laughs> they're good to the taste and they're sticky. They're boiled down truths that are a joy to sing and easy to remember. This past year, I've been encouraged by uh, songs like Jesus, Strong and Kind by City of Light. Christ our home, uh, Christ our hope in life and death that we, we already sang this morning by Keith and Getty and Math Papa and Upon Him by Matt Redman. These are songs that you can put on repeat as you meditate on the truths that they contain. I have hope in 2021 for good books. Faithful men and women who write biographies and commentaries and practical how-tos from a biblical perspective. In my personal life, I have a reading plan where I uh, read a fun book, I read a business book, and I read a book that encourages me spiritually. There are many lists that you can get off the internet of good Christian books to read, but uh, if you've never read uh, Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer, 2021, this should be your year. I have hope in 2021 because of the maturing of our young people, learning the things of the Lord, spreading their wings, learning to feed themselves from the word of God, seeking wisdom and keeping themselves from the world. I have hope in 2021 because of our senior saints who are faithful to the Lord and share with us the wisdom of their years and show us how to endure to the end. I have hope in 2021 because of our missionaries. This is where you have a front row view to what God is doing around the world. If you want to increase your interest in evangelism, support some missionaries. Scripture says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It's a great investment with eternal rewards. As you can see, there's lots to hope for in 2021. It may be Isaiah that said it's best. Isaiah 40, 31, for those who hope on the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will, not, they will walk and not be faint. And this leads us to the table. At the communion table, we celebrate the hope that we have in Christ. We look back to what he has done for us on the cross. We look to the present where we confess our sins and renew our commitment to follow him. We look forward to that day when we feast together face to face with our Lord. As Jesus said, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. As we say each week, this is not the table of Redeemer Fellowship. All who have put their faith and trust in the Lord can partake. We're going to sing a song while we pass out the elements, so please hold on to them and we'll take them together. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. It's not based on our works. It's not based on our righteousness. It's not based on the schemes of man, but on you and you alone. As we, uh, as we take this communion, we give you thanks and praise and hope. In your name we pray, amen.